G'day and welcome back everybody uh, to part two of this uh, exploration of Google Earth. My name is Chris Betcher on the Google for Education team here in Sydney and my colleague Steve. How are you doing? Kia ora, I'm Steve. I'm from uh, Auckland, New Zealand. I'm the um, New Zealand lead for Google for Education over here. So um, uh, both Chris and I have um, have worked together for quite some time looking at running workshops and bits and pieces and we're also really lucky to be part of the um, Google Earth experts, Google Earth Education Experts group. Um, so we're a group that look at how to use Google Earth in uh, in the classroom uh, for educators. And we've been lucky to see a lot of the stuff you'll see today before it was released uh, and had some feedback onto the features you see in Earth now. So really cool to be with you. And um, we'll we'll take you through uh, a little look at how you can do some creation stuff. So Absolutely. take it away, Chris. Absolutely. So in our last video, which if you haven't seen, I strongly recommend you go and watch that one first. This one will make a whole lot of sense if you watch the first yeah, one. Yeah, well, it will. Um, and we've kind of divided our talk into those two videos into two sections. One was consumption and this one is creation. The last one was how do you use Google Earth to just go and use it to explore the world and use all the features in there? And hopefully we've done a good job of helping you understand what's available inside Google Earth. In yeah. this video, we want to show you how you actually then use the creation tools. And these are new. They haven't been around that long, probably less than a year, maybe, around yeah, a year. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, so they're relatively new. And if you've been using Google Earth for a while and haven't looked at it for a while, maybe you looked at it a couple, you know, more than 12 months ago, a lot of this stuff is brand new. Mm. Uh, and it, it's it's similar to you could, you could do the old tours and in, in old earth you know the old desktop yeah. version and there was a tour builder as well where you could make build tours um, yeah. as another product but now everything's coming together on earth and so it's like uh, it's all kind of here so amazing amazing things so yeah, yeah we'll show you how you can use them in your classes absolutely so just to recap from the end of the last video remember we showed you this feature called voyages where you click on the little pirate steering wheel and it brings up this uh, amazing multimedia encyclopedia of uh, of interesting places around the world told through the yeah. use of google maps yeah. and google earth and so there's tons and tons of really interesting thing there now what i want to point out if i go into any of these and i'll just i'll just randomly pick this one here reading the abc's from space <laughs> some really weird stuff in here but what i want to point out to you is it these things always have a fairly common format they usually always start with a splash screen or an opening screen like this which is just one big image that fills the screen and you can see there's a start exploring button there when you start exploring it then takes you into google earth proper flies you into a location zooms in and takes a particular view Right now, this one happens to be looking perpendicular straight down on the earth, but it doesn't have to. It could have been an angled view. And in fact, this is a live map. So, you know, I can zoom in and out just like we mm. talked about in the last episode. We can uh, rotate around and zoom. So we're free to explore on the left hand side of the screen. On the right hand side of the screen, generally speaking, the format is kind of like this. You end up with a box at the top and you can have media in the top. So usually an image or a video or, and Steve's gonna get tricky later and show you how you can actually put other things in that box as well. <laughs> I um, appreciate it. yeah. That's geek stuff, right? By <laughs> default, it's just kind of images and videos. Uh, but, and below that you see there's a box there where you can have some information and you can put whatever information in there you like. You can see you can include hyperlinks out to other things. And then usually down the bottom here, there's a little navigator to tell you this is like part one of 26 parts. And this particular one, you know, there's an A, <laughs> if you fly to the next one here, it's going to show you somewhere on Earth that looks like I know a what's coming next. Yeah, I knew that was coming next. I don't know. I think we're clutching at straws a little bit here, but anyway. Interesting <laughs> to see the way this whole billabong thing is working, though, the way the, the bend in the river just keeps getting um, through erosion, just keeps wearing out. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. That's a whole other rabbit hole. So I'm going to hand <laughs> off to Steve because uh, he's the geography teacher. I'm more the tech guy. Steve is definitely the geography teacher here. Um, and I'm going to get him to explain some of the stuff that he's done making these things with his kids uh, and how you can use this feature inside Google Earth. So, Steve, there is your screen. Oh, yeah. uh, where are we right there? uh, there's your screen right there. There you go. That's your screen. Nice one. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Hey, look, yeah, and, and Chris gave a really nice intro to, to what those what those really cool resources are. And, and yeah, you can put a lot of different stuff into, into one of these. And, and the thing about this is it's actually not that hard to do. Um, you can create these things pretty quickly or you can spend a long time doing some stuff and there's some really super techie bits we can look at, but um, we'll gloss over them, but do come back to them. There's, um, there's tons of resources out there to show you how to do these. So what we're looking at here is one I made um, about one of our local Māori iwi, um, Ngāti Whatua, and there was a, a large occupation of what's called Bastion Point. So you can see Bastion Point in there. So that's that splash screen Chris was talking about. We can click through down the bottom here 
and it will fly us around. You can see there's that knowledge card up in the top right hand there. That takes information from Wikipedia by default. And we can just click through and look at different things. And as you said, you know, it flies us in, it shows us certain things. We have that up here, we can click through some different pictures and we have some text down the bottom there. So we can make these things that are relevant to our context. And also we can grab things that we already have, convert them to one of these, and then show people how to use them. So this is that thing and that you're going to jump in there for one second. I just want to point yeah, something out because you, you'll, you'll come to this later on. And just while you're here, just want to show what that means. Mm. Can you go back to the previous uh, screen there? Yeah, for sure. So you notice that panel on the right hand side there that we talked about before. And I made the comment that it's generally speaking a piece of media at the top and then some text at the bottom. That's what we call a large card, right? If you go to the next screen, you'll notice that Steve has created this one yep. with, it's not a panel that goes the entire screen, it's actually a floating card, and that's what we call a small card. Yep. So there are large cards and small cards, and I just want you to be clear on the difference because when we get to making these later on, you'll see there's an option in there, and if you don't know about that option, you'll be scratching your head later and wondering, why doesn't mine look like the way I want it to look? It's because there are two different types of cards. Back totally. to you. Yeah, awesome, man. And you can also see there's this great now that now this area here is not actually orange, but what I've done is um, I've put an outline of an area and switched it on and colored it in orange. So if you want to show a location or an area, you can switch that on. So I can go into my my settings here and switch that off, so it'll be gone. So you can show um, areas of polygons. You can also show lines on here as well. If I just click down a little bit in here. If I click down to this one, so this is a YouTube video. So if I click on that, it's going to start playing. So you can put YouTube videos into here as well. So we've got text, we've got pictures, we've got YouTube videos. We've basically got a whole unit of work sitting on Earth. Now you notice up the top here, there is the, the weird creepy head with a plus sign beside it. We can share the project. Um, we can also um, go into editing so we can add people to this to collaborate, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So again, these are web based. So when I go back to present, I can actually share this as a web page. So if students are creating stuff, they can share it with anybody with a web browser. All right, so that's a little example of one I made earlier. And the thing I like about it is it makes me look really clever and flash, but it's actually <laughs> not that hard. Right, so let's, should we just jump in and get going, I reckon? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, cool. A nerd in me wants to point out that it's actually, you said it looks flash. It's not built with flash. This is all HTML5. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, the clarity. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I like it. So up the top, there's a new, the nice blue new project button. Um, this pops down. We can create the project. And so it's actually a drive file that lives in our drive. We can open a project from Google Drive. So if you've, what you can do is you can start a, start a, a, a story or a, a project here put it in your drive, share it with the students, they can open it up and then off they go. Down here is a KML file, so you can create a KML, you can import a KML, or you can import a KML either from drive or from your computer. So KML is keyhole markup language. It was It's the language that Old Earth was written in. Now Old Earth, I remember them telling us when we were over in um, Mountain View at a really cool um, geo teachers um, meetup we had, that no one knows how Old Earth still works because the language it was written in is so old so that's what kml is keyhole was the original people that that uh that they actually built earth so there you go um so let's go create project so what we've got here is we have over on the left hand side the untitled project you say it's saved auto saved seconds ago fantastic auto saving let's give it a title um cool beaches Sorry for the Australian. Uh, so, Steve, audience. this is like a Google Doc, right? In that you don't have to remember to save it all the time. It just auto saves it. Totally, totally. One of the absolutely fantastic things about about all the Google products is they auto save. It's none of that. Oh, I lost it. It's all gone. Um, we were just talking before Chris and I that the fact that you can't type when people are watching you. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to try. And, and also, I'm a man, so I can't do two things at once. So, let's go. I'm going to put a capital W. So, what I've done here is that that splash screen, that beginning one. This is what I've done here. Okay, so that's that's my title, that's the the description there. So that's sorry, that's the splash screen. That's the that's the beginning. So it's called cool beaches. I can go up here and go plus, and I can share that with people just like any other file. Okay, so, so, so when you share that, so we could work on this together at the same time, like a Google Doc. 
Yeah, we totally can. Um, it, it's I not. Think the group of students and they're doing a project together. You can actually have all the students working together on this. Yeah, totally. Is, yeah. Now it, it doesn't update instantly like it does with a Google Doc. You do have to refresh it, but people can actually work on the same one. Um, oh. You can so you can give a couple of people the rights to, to working on this. So basically, what I've done here is I've clicked on share. I'm the owner. So it does say, look, do you want to be seen as the owner of this? And I go, yep, sure do, please. So if I go, there we go. If I go, Chris, I'm going to back him ed editor and I'm going to send. So Chris will get a notification now saying that I've invited him to collaborate on a project with him. So we can both work on this at the same time, basically. Yep, just got it. There you go. Look at that. I wasn't lying. So if I go new feature, I'm going to have a full screen slide. So this is that splash screen we talked about. Uh, let's see, beautiful beaches. Beaches. Where are they? Question mark. And you can so write anything in there too. And I noticed you've totally. got italic, and so you can you can format your text a little bit. You can really go crazy in there as well. Yeah. Um, you can. Yeah. Let's not do that. Come, yet. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this later. I'm going to come, come back, back to this later. later. Yeah, no, we're yeah. not going to do that there. Uh, down here, the background. Let's go plus. This looks very familiar. Google image search. Beaches. If I just go beach. I'm sure that won't bring back many. There we go. Look at that. So if I decide that's the picture I want. Now, one thing that's really cool here is down the bottom, it actually gives you the link of where it's from. So you can reference all those things as well. Um, now, these are the ones that are tagged for reuse as well. So quite nice there. Let's go right. select. They're all copyright free images. They are just like anything you can put into drive. So we've done that. There we go. There's my nice picture. If I now go preview presentation, that's going to show me what that page looks like. So there we go. Beautiful beaches. Down the bottom is the text I put in there. Where are they? You can see we've got a table of contents, one of one. Sweet. So that's our first screen. Not nice. too hard just yet. You can have as much or as little on there as you want. If you want to make your own picture, put some text on there, whatever you want. Now, so that is our first place. If I go backwards here, it's going to take you back to the project. You can see there is the splash screen sitting there. We can click on the pencil to, add, to edit it. We can go to the trash bin to delete it, and we can go, we can switch it on and off. So remember I had that, um, that area before, the orange one? If I click on the creepy eyeball, it'll switch it off and it won't be there. So you can go backwards and forwards among switching and, and, and not switching. Okay, it's so eyeball. Yes, I heard someone <laughs> called that. I'm like, that's a great name for it. <laughs> so, if I go so beautiful beach, cool beach to put in, do we? What's that? Now we need a cool beach to put in. We do. So there's a oh, couple of different ways of doing this. So we can go new feature, yeah. and we can go search. We can get add a place mark. We can draw a line. So those lines and shapes. That's how you can do those. So, mm. so if I just go search, and oh look at that, Waikiki pops up. Why not? Why not, indeed? Why not? So we can shoot over there. It's going to zoom in and go, there is the area called Waikiki. Let's zoom it around. So if I go, now I want to actually have a bit, a bit, a bit of view. And, and last time, if you didn't catch up with last time's episode, Chris talked us about, um, about click, shift, and drag. So if we do that, so I'm going to use my scroll. And I'm going to zoom in here. It really and is such a fundamental technique, isn't it? That like click, click, shift, drag business. It really is. And geography teacher point here, you can obviously see the longshore drift along here hitting this groin. There's absolutely nothing on that bit of the beach there. This is beautiful over here. So there you go. If I go, that's the view I want. Let's go my... I think you should get the view on the longshore drift. It's much more interesting. Okay, sweet. As. Let's do that. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. It's got a beautiful groin. Um, great local tip, awesome place to see uh, see turtles just around here, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But anyway, so if I go that there, and I and that's what we're going to do. So I've, I've gone into this place here. If I go down to that bottom corner, there is an add place mark. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go click and add a place mark right there. Okay, so the place title is called Waikiki. So if you search, you can zoom into here. I'm adding it to my Cool Beaches project save okay so it's now on that place there okay so you see it's popped back up to here now if i decide i want to actually change that view i'm going to click into my waikiki on the side there i'm going to go my pencil 
and I go, yeah, well, that's that's what I saved. So see how I saved that exactly like that. If I go, you know what, actually, let's do a little bit of a drag. That's a little bit better. And I can go down the bottom here and go capture this view. So it'll actually update my view, which is quite helpful. So that's what's going to happen when we fly into that place. Now, if we nice. look on the left hand side. What, you, what you're actually talking about there is you, you're in a particular latitude and longitude facing a certain direction at a certain altitude with a yep. certain like declination or inclination. And yep. what it's yep. doing is taking all of those different parameters and actually storing them as what we call a view, correct? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And you can see those places down in that bottom right hand corner. So we're, we're at 42 meters, we're at, we're at that latitude and longitude. Um, so you know we can see exactly where we are as well. Nice. So that's our that's our view we've gone into. Now what we can do here is we can go up to the the camera, click on the plus. We're back in here again. Let's go Waikiki. Let's do a search. There we go. There's a nighttime view. Fantastic. Again, we've got that uh, link down the below of where it came from. So that now is adding a photo to that box up there. So there we go up in the top left, it's sitting there. We can add another one if we want, or we can add a YouTube clip. Now, it's always dangerous when you go add a YouTube clip and just type something random in there. So not, not, the, not the top tip to do in, do in class. Um, but let's go, oh, I love song, let's see. Uh, walk through with hotel locations, why not? So we'll go select, and that's gonna add that YouTube clip to that box up there. So the title is Waikiki. Let's call it Waikiki Beach. It's actually a bit nicer, isn't it? And if you've got your own photos, so say you've been there and you've actually taken your own photos on your own digital camera, can you, or your phone, can you um, include those as well? Yeah, great question. So if I go there, I go back, you can see there's your photos, there's Google Drive, mm -hmm. there's a URL as well. So if you've got something that's hosted somewhere, you can grab the URL and pop that in there as well. So lots of different ways to bring in lots of different media into this. And the, your photos would pull it straight from your Google Photos collection. Yeah, yeah, totally. So easy. Yeah, oh, too easy. Let's put some info about Waikiki here. So I've got a title, I've got some photos, and I've got a YouTube clip. I've got, remember Chris talked before about that idea of a, a small or a large info box, so we can change what that is. So small or large, I'll just keep that small. Yeah, I think I used the term card before, but info box is really the correct term, isn't it? Card, no, I got you, yeah. Um, so we're going to have a pin, a pin where we drop things. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to have a pin when we drop things, um, drop things on the map, and we can change the size of that pin. We can change the color. We can click on the the, the, uh, the snowman there, the skinny snowman, and use some more icons. So you can have a good play with what you've got there. So if I decide that I just want to go, that one, a castle, because why not? I'm going to make it yellow. Now, down below, there's, there's some more crazy things you can do. So you can actually change the heading, you can change the tilt, you can change the latitude and longitude. You can do all sorts of stuff in there. We'll leave that for later. Down the bottom, you'll notice, watch tutorial, click on that. It tells you how to do all the stuff if you forget. Hey, can you just, just for instructional purposes, could you just go in and shift the view slightly? Just change yeah. the, the, the view. Uh, no, over, on, over on the actual map, just do a click and drag. Okay, gotcha, on. gotcha. Yep, so yeah. I'm going to do that. So if you do a click on the drag and then you click that button that says capture this view, what you'll notice yep. is all the numbers in that box over on the side change Bam. with the view information. We do. So it's a direct correlation between the numbers in that box and the view that you're looking at. There you go. Yep. Mm. So we can do that. So, yeah, really cool. So you can play with a whole lot of stuff down there and jump down the bottom of that tutorial if you want to. So that's, that's my pin for Waikiki Beach. I'm going to go preview. It's auto saving, remember? So here we have. So this is the view you can see when you go to this pin. There's that that photo up there. There's my text. So you can put as much text in there as you want. Go forward. There's your YouTube clip. We click on that. And it's gonna start playing a, a YouTube clip. Okay. So that's our two places we've got now in our project. We've nice. got, and that's with these. a small info box. It's a small info box. Yeah. Right. So if I go right, let's go now. If I just go. I just want to jump straight into a search. Let's go. Uh, I was just thinking. Let's do. Let's do Bondi. Uh, now you notice in the search box as well, there are some tours that pop up already. So those are those voyages. You can actually search from the search box for a voyager as well. But let's go Bondi, not the junction, because that's not a beach, is it? 
see you, Waikiki. Hopefully, see you again one day. All right, Bondi. There we go. So, Bondi Rescue. Fantastic. So, let's do our click and drag again. I want to go kind of that way. Let's do a bit of a zoom in because we want to see where the lifeguards hang out. There we go. Sweet. So, I'm going to down the bottom. I'm going to now. If we wanted to draw a line, we can do that with this. Remember, we, down the bottom was that little pin drop pin. But over on the side here, you see I can actually click in there to add it a project as well. Nice. So let's just do that. Bondi Beach, save. It's in the project. So you can see on the left now, you've got Waikiki and we've got Bondi. So that's sitting in there. So if we go Bondi Beach and we go pencil, we go back into Bondi. The pencil's just the generic icon for editing too, right? Totally, yeah, yeah. So that's our Bondi there. If I'm thinking that's quite cool, that's a, a nice view. I'm going to capture that view there. Now, what about if I grab peg person? Gender, non-specific peg person, and I look at all those dots that are popping up. We talked about those in our last song where those dots are ones that people have, have brought up. And I noticed that there's a line on the beach. So someone must have taken the trekker along Bondi Beach. Man, you, you were worried about random YouTube videos. I'd be worried about dropping a random pig man on Bondo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's someone with their own. So that's Luke C. Walton. He has done a photosphere on the beach there. So if we actually go, you know what? I want to capture that view. We've actually now captured the street view. Nice. So really cool. Actually, Luke C. Walton has just reminded me to, to just mention to people that these uh, this is an example of a 360 camera. You can see there's a lens on each side. So when you take a photo with this, it actually snaps two images on either side and I stitches that. the software. And, oh, there he goes. He's holding one there in the, in the picture. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, you know, that if, if you are looking to make your own 360s and contribute your own images to the map, this is not necessarily this particular one, but these are pretty good. But a 360 camera is definitely the easiest way to do it. If you uh, don't have one or un un unable to get one, there is actually software on your mobile phone um, for Android and iOS. It's called Street View, and it has a little section in the Street View app that will step you through everything you need to know to make your own 360 images. Exactly right, exactly right. So we've got Bondi Beach there. So if I just click on the pencil, we, you see at the top of there, we have the information provided by Google. So that's that freely available stuff. If we want to put our own stuff in there, we can click on replace and we can then start adding stuff to it. Now, in that box there, we can put whatever we want. Okay, so if we had a, a URL we wanted to pop in there, then we could actually put a URL into that box that our students could jump out to. So if we had a Google form, for instance, that had some questions about Bondi Beach, we could pop the URL in there click on that and we can jump out to it so any url that's in there we can jump out to so i'm just going to go let's just go let's go this one i bet your www.bondi.com exists yeah but do we want to go there let's have a look <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure it'll be caching yeah bound to be bound to be let's grab the link there so we can we can either jump to a feature in the document so we can actually go to different places based on this click so you can go, if you want to go to this beach, click here, go there. If you want to go to this beach, click here, go there. So you can jump around within there as well, and it will ask you what you want to do when you get there. So let's see if we got bondi.com. So if we go preview, there we go, up in that box. I didn't put a picture in this one. Will it work? It's going to jump me out to... No, it doesn't um, exist. Quick, everyone go to bondi.com now. Quick, quick. So... Let's go there. Let's jump back into my. Hopefully, I'm going to jump back into my Earth there. I am there. Fantastic. Go back into full screen. So, bondi.com, you heard it first. It's available. I'm amazed. Maybe I just didn't put the HTTPS in my phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, Chris is going to go and buy it. So, let's put a picture in there because we love having pictures. Here we go. Again, that Wikipedia link comes up. It's in there. I'm now going to go just wait for it to load. Here we go. Preview my presentation. So there is my Street View image. There is the picture of Bondi up there. So again, there is my link. So that could be have a look at the picture. 
there's another photo there could be a bunch of photos in there a bunch of videos in there with a link to a worksheet to a a, a web quest to a hyperdoc to anything that has a web link you can chuck in there so again hey, students still, can jump out of different stuff as well yeah could you just go back and edit that point and try and put a large info box in just so we can see the difference yeah let's do that so if i drop that down large info box up to the top saving auto saved preview that presentation there we go so there's our large info box right. so we could have a whole lot of stuff sitting inside here so you can add whatever you want in there go and research a place pop it in there um, go and find out about a better place put some information who likes this place put a question in there so links to anything you want in there so a really cool way to, to have a good play with a bit of editing as well so so you showed, you, say, you, showed, you showed the ability to create obviously the splash screen the opening screen Yep. And then you created a, uh, a point of interest with yep. picture, video, and some information, and uh, as a small information box, info box. Yep. And yep. then you created another one with some information and a picture and a hyperlink and yep. a large info box. Yep. And really, for the majority of teachers now who have just learnt those simple skills, it's just rinse and repeat. It, you can just take that skill now and yep. simply repeat it over and over again to create as many sections inside a tour as you like and whether you're exploring yeah. cool beaches around the world or famous battles uh, that have taken place around the world or i don't know yep. steve like you could that's the thing about this it's so limitless oh, it's anything. To what you yeah. Can assemble. yeah totally and you know the the one i showed before about bastion point it has videos of, of documentary that you can watch it's got um it's got pictures of people who are there it's got a point where things happened in the information about that place so yeah, yeah, we looked at one uh, about the Underground Railroad, you know, that has all the different stops and what happened there. So, again, you, you know, you're, you're really only limited by what you want to put on this thing. And yeah, also because you can hyperlink it out. I was going to say, if you're a geography teacher and you're teaching it, obviously, you know, geography principles, so, you know, looking at... I don't know, you're a better place to talk about this than me, but you're know, talking about different river systems or different biosystems or different different parts of the world and like jumping from let's go and look at a rainforest to let's go and look at a savanna to let's go and look at a dry sclerophyll forest or whatever it might be. You know, you, totally. you can simply assemble those tours in any order you want. That's yeah. for G teachers, which is our audience today. But you can imagine if you're an English teacher and starting to go, let's go and explore all the places that Shakespeare wrote about, or let's go for a history teacher to explore all the places, uh, all the oh, battles exactly. of World War II, or an art teacher yeah. to say, let's look at all the famous galleries in the world. Like yeah, yeah. there is a limit to what you can do with this. Oh, totally right. Totally right. I mean, a, a great example is, you know, if you did five places along the Amazon River, right from the very, the source right to the mouth, and look at how the, the Amazon River changes along along um, its, its, uh, its path, you know, different colours of the water, different um, tributaries coming in, the fact it's massively wide at, at its mouth. So, you know, it's a way of showing things where they are, but also seeing change as well. So lots of really cool stuff you can add in here. And, you know, as we said before, you can add pretty much whatever you want to this. If you've got something that's got a link, you can add it to this place. So, yeah. you know, we can jump into here. You can go down, as we just saw, do that, zoom it around and find out what's there. You know, grab peg person, switch between your 2D and 3D again, and then when you're ready, you can just grab that that image. So a lot of cool stuff you can play with. Not a, we, we talk about photos and videos, but within the photos, like the or, sorry, within the map section that you're linking to in these tours, it's not just go and zoom in and move a map around like Steve's been doing there, but also don't forget you've got access to all the street view stuff as well. If you zoom into somewhere that's got 3D imagery, you can also zoom into the 3D imagery. So yep. it's so open-ended. We have a phrase in this Google Earth Education Experts group that Steve mentioned, Earth Every Day. You know, it's yep. a little catchphrase we use because we really do think that this is one of these tools that you can almost teach anything with. It's and, uh, you know, I see a lot of teachers who go, oh, yeah, Earth, I, I, my kids do a project once a year in Earth. And it's like, no, no, this is a tool that you can literally teach from the majority of the time if you chose to. Totally. I mean, you know, a great example is looking at the Hoover Dam, you know, so the Hoover Dam was built to, to provide power for Las Vegas. And you look at that, and you go, yeah, dams are fantastic. They're a clean, green way of making energy. And you zoom out and you go, yeah, but what about this massive bunch of flooding that's occurred behind the dam to provide it so let's start having a discussion about that yeah. you know and so yeah jump into there capture the view 
jump right in if you want grab peak person jump to that view and so yeah it can be anything absolutely yep. anybody could use this phenomenal resource all right, so I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, and I think uh, between the last video, which is our introduction to Earth, uh, getting you know, understand how to navigate around and then some of the basic features inside Earth, right through to this video where you're learning the key features of actually creating your own content, getting your kids to create their own content. Mm -hmm. I think there's a whole, literally a whole new world opening up. Oh, there is. There is. never explored this yep. before. Yeah. And if in doubt, click on the help, get some help. You know, there are some great help videos in here. Um, even just, you know, jump on the old, on the on the line and, and Google up some videos of creating with Google Earth. There's so many out there. Yep, fantastic. Well, on behalf of the Google for Education team, uh, we've been really, uh, I feel really fortunate that we've been asked to do this um, this workshop for you guys today over these couple of videos uh, for the Geography Teachers Association of New South Wales. And um, yeah, we, we look forward to working with you guys more in the future. Yeah, definitely. Great, great to bring the geo to you. Um, get into Earth, clear some time, and just have a good play. Yeah, start creating. Hello.